Welcome back to Primed for Battle, and today we're painting Usharan, the Mortark of Delusion, one of the best miniatures that Games Workshop has put out, one of the favourite that I've had the joy of painting, and uh, just a really cool model, just dripping with character. It's a real joy to paint. There were some really simple processes that I use, uh, so let's uh, jump in. I'm going to start on the base today and to start with over a Chaos Black Prime I used Rhinox Hive and I use this fairly liberally all over the entirety of the base to give it a nice uh, dark brown uh, base to start on and then from there I've dry brushed, fairly heavy dry brush Doom Bull Brown over the entirety of that as well. From there, we're using some towel light ochre. Again, not quite as heavy as the last, but reasonably heavy and over the entirety of that model. We're going to really build up some different colored textures to sort of make the rock and the uh, stones and things very worn and weathered. Then we've come in with some Administratum Grey mixed with a little bit of Thunderhawk Blue just to give it a slight bluish tinge. And again, by that a fairly heavy over all of the ground and base texture. And then I've gone through with Agrax Earthshell and I've coated the entire thing with Agrax to give it some nice shades and brown and earthy tones. And from there, I've done a, another dry brush of just straight Administratum Grey. Not too heavy, but enough that I want to start working back towards that grayish tone, but still enough of that brown tone underneath. Then I've come through with some Corax White just to really pick out the edges. So just a very uh, light dry brush, just so that we're picking out all the highest edges and ridges of all of that stone. Now we're starting with some shades. I've used some Coelia green shade and I've just gone around the very bottom edges and rims of all of the uh, stonework just to sort of give it some moldy, mossy kind of tones. And I've done it a little bit in some of the deeper cracks and things as well. Then I've used some Cassandra yellow shade and I've applied that selectively over the top of the stone in just sort of little pools or uh, spots very light with the shade. And then I've just come through with some skeleton hoard just to pick out some of the bones uh, that are lying around on the base. Uh, there's quite a number around the top of the base where one of his feet go. Now we're going to start working on the skin uh, and some other areas on Usharan. And to start with, I've used some in Administratum Grey. I've dry brushed that quite heavily over the entirety of the skin and also the fur. Next, we're going to come through with Corax White. We're going to do that over the raised areas of the skin the more visible areas where the light would hit. So leave the undersides in the gray, uh, but the you know, top of the thighs, the legs, all the areas where the sunlight is gonna hit. Don't forget to do the face as well. What I've done is I've come back to the face with a smaller brush, just to give some more deliberate uh, highlights with that Corax white, just sort of where I want the uh, focus to sort of be on the bony ridges of the cheeks and the forehead 
Now what I've done is for the skin, I've come through with a contrast medium and pterodon turquoise mix. This is about 80% contrast medium because the pterodon turquoise is quite strong. And then I've applied this over the entirety of the skin. All the work we've done with the dry brushing prior to this has done most of the shading work for it. Now I'm using some iron rack skin and I'm coming through on the hands up to sort of halfway up the wrist and uh, forearm there on both hands and then also the feet up the shin slightly just to kind of like the box art just bring some lighter areas of interest to the skin uh, and uh, highlight some of those bones and uh, veiny areas. On the face I've come through similar to before, I've just gone over the eyebrows, uh, some of the raised areas of the skin there on the cheeks, around the lips, uh, the tips of the ears, the chin, etc where the skin is tightest against the bone and then as a further highlight i've used some deep kin flesh to start with i've done this around the very edges of where the skin is torn on the elbows for the bones but i've also then gone through on some of the knuckles and areas where the skin is pressing really tight against the bone so the backs of the hands, around the toes, where some of the bones are. And then again on the face, I've applied that around the nose and lips and the eyebrow, the chin, etc. Just a really fine highlight. Also around the base of those, uh, his crown, the bones that are sticking out of the top of his head. Then we're using some Drucci Violet. I've started very lightly and apply more as I go along to really just start to bring some purplish tones into the area of broken skin around the, uh, around the crown at the top of his head there. That continues around to sort of the base around the top of his ears and then also behind on the top of his head where the bone is really pushed out of the skin. And then I've done the same thing as well on the elbows all the way around where those bones again have broken. But also you can see here just in the uh, areas of broken flesh around his mouth. Next, just quickly, I've come through with some black Templar and I've applied that over all of the uh, toenails and fingernails. Great thing about black Templar is that it's not super black, it's a little bit transparent, so it allows some of that uh, dry brushing uh, tone to come through it just a little bit. Now we're gonna start doing some of the metallics to start with, I've done Castellax Bronze purely on the shoulder pauldrons in this instance. So there's the one that I've uh, put on the body there, and then I've left one of the shoulder pauldron off as part of my sub-assembly. And then for the gold, I've used Balthazar Gold, and I've applied this around various parts of the uh, mace that he has uh, of course to the end and then I've also used it for all of his jewellery so his uh, bangles, his rings and the uh, cup that he has at his hip 
And then what I've done is some brass scorpion. I've just used that to add a bit of color variation and tone to the shoulder pauldrons, just to give them a little bit of a sort of weathered, beaten look. And then I've come through with lead belcher for the steel colors. So I've done that for the aft handle of the, uh, the mace and also the chain mail uh, that it's hanging underneath the pauldron. Now just quickly, we're going to go through the gems and things that he has. So obviously he has a big one in the middle of his forehead and then also some on some of his rings. And for that, I've used Mephiston Red as a starting point. And then I've used some Evil Sun Scarlet, but what I've done is I've only applied that to the upper third to half of the gem on sort of an angle, just to sort of where the light is catching those gems the most. Then we're using Wild Rider Red, and again, just in the top corners where the light is catching, this time a little bit smaller, maybe a quarter or a fifth, but within the previous steps, uh, red. And then I've just added a couple little dots of Corax white to really pick out where the uh, glint of the light is on the jewels. Now I've just come back to do the tongue and for that I've used Volopus Pink which is as always great for tongues and details similar. I've applied that fairly liberally over the tongue to give some really nice tone. And then I've used some Imperial Fist just for the eyes. Just carefully dot those. Try to avoid getting it on the rest of the eye, but if you do, it's okay. It uh, You can go back and just apply some of the highlight colors around the eye and then shade it with some the Drucci Violet again. Next I've used some Paraberg Crimson and I've applied this around the gums. Don't keep in mind too much if you get that on the teeth. You can go back and fix that up. This really sort of brings out the the gum gummy red areas around the top. And then I've used some Corax White again. I'll just dry brush that across the crown uh, slash bones that are coming out of his head just to really bring out those edges. Just a very light dry brush. You don't need to go too heavy with it and it'll just pick up those edges really nicely. Now just going through the rope that he has hanging around his neck and around his waist, I've used Garagax Sewer, which is a nice deep brown colour. Apply this fairly heavy and that will do a lot of the shading work for you. Obviously we've also laid down that dry brush which will help as well. Now we're going onto the fur coat. And to start with, I've used some Darko Flesh for all the areas of skin that is uh, visible. So that's on the uh, right side there where it's rolled up on the edge. Then there's also some rolled through in various layers on the back. And then I've gone through with Gilliman Flesh, among others, to uh, do some of the faces and heads and things that are hidden amongst the fur. There is an orc skull and what looks like maybe a ghoul or some sort. 
a few skulls. Feel free to mix it up a little bit and put some different tones and different colors for some of those. And then to start with the fur, I've used Cyborg Brown, particularly around the, uh, the beast uh, that he has in his fur. And I've applied that into some smaller areas to, look, to sort of look like it is just that beast's, beast's fur. And there's some extra uh, fur matted in there to give it a nice bit of mixture and the effect of different furs being used for the... Uh, the coat. For the remainder of the fur, I've used Garagax Sewer again, and I just applied that very liberally over all of the remaining fur, avoiding some of the hair of the heads where I could, and I can come back through later with those and pick out those with some different colours. Now onto the heads of the beast on his back. To start with, I've used some Ungor flesh and I've applied that around the nose uh, and lips and cheek and eyes sort of area. And then uh, also around some of the wounds and on the inside of the ears. Then to highlight, I've used some Blade One flesh and I've just applied that within the areas of the previous color. I've just used that to highlight the uh, most raised areas of the nose, tips of the ears, uh, around the eyes, etc. And for the darker areas of the fur on the piece, I've used some Doomble Brown, which is a nice reddish brown. I've used that to apply around the top of the nose and the forehead the backs of the ears and stuff. And I've come through with Caribou Crimson to the inside of the ear to give it a nice pinky tone. And I finish that off with some Reichland Flesh Shade over the entirety of the fur and the skin just to really add the uh, shade and depth to those heads. Now I've come through with some Bane Blade Brown and just dry brush lightly over the entirety of the fur to really sort of highlight the tips of that fur and bring a bit of variation to that uh, that look. Now I'm going back to the metallics with some Agrax Earthshade and just applying that over the entirety of all of the metallics, which will give them a nice dirty worn, aged, sort of weathered look. Now we're on to the cape. To start with, I've applied a base of Phoenician purple over the entirety of the cape. It's a fairly large area, so I've used a larger brush and just gone through and had to do a couple of coats. Just apply that over the entirety of that cape. And then for the next step, I've used some Galvorback Red, which is a nice burgundy sort of type color. And I've dry brushed that reasonably heavy over the entirety of the cape as well, uh, just to highlight and start bringing out all those raised areas. And then I've gone through to corn red and again 
just started dry brushing that over the entirety of the model to the level that I want. So I'm leaving the nice deep purple colors in the recesses and bringing the red out to all those raised areas. I'll keep working that up through various red shades. So then we've gone on to Mephiston red. I just brought that across. I've used a large dry brush for the majority of that cape and then moved on to a smaller dry brush as I get around to the edges of the cape so we don't go over all of the uh, ground area that we've already covered. Then I've used some Evil Sun Scarlet. Progressively as I've worked through these red shades I've gone with lighter and lighter dry brushes just to uh, really sort of only bring out the brighter colors in the very edges and raised areas. And then as a final dry brush I've used Wild Rider Red which is almost an orangey red. Just really brought out the most raised areas of that. And then I'm going to go through and do a bit of weathering on the bottom of the cape just for where it's dragging along the ground. I've started with the same steps through as the base, uh, so Rhinox Hide, just dry brushing that around the very ends of the cape. Then I've moved through to Doomble Brown, again just dry brushing that over the end, trying to avoid getting it too much on my base there. And I finished that off with a light dry brush of Tau Light Ochre. It really tied in nicely with the ground that I've done on the base. And there we have it. The finished Usharan Mortark of Delusion. The Summer King. What a fantastic miniature. I've applied some snow effects to the base there and uh, yeah what an absolute joy this one was definitely one of my favorites that I've done I hope you've enjoyed watching how I've gone through this process it's a little bit different but in some ways similar to some of the other videos taking me a little bit longer to get this one out but uh, yeah absolute joy had some fun there with some photography as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you could like and subscribe, it would really help. Tell me what you'd like to see next in the comments, what you thought, any questions you might have. Comments also help drive the video to more people. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.